Heroes created by people's imagination live and commit their acts of bravery in our program, the legend of Kazakhs. Legends are an invaluable cultural heritage passed down from generation to generation. Legends and myths are an important source of research in the history of the Kazakh people. They express the dreams of the people for justice, heroism, kindness and beauty of the human soul. The whimsical and wonderful nature of Kazakhstan is shrouded in an aura of mystery and puzzles and have become a source of legends and superstitions. The unusual mountain, Karaol Tube, or Watchtower Mountain, with a flat tip is impressive and fascinating. This particular legend that we chose for this program will be about the courage and bravery of the people, the valiant defenders of the city who dared to withstand the great Genghis Khan and his invincible army. was setting slowly over the horizon. The elders sadly shook their heads on the thin, dry necks and whispered as if they felt the approach of misfortune. <laughs> the fierce and bloodthirsty Mongolian hordes of Genghis Khan quickly filled the entire valley. Now, there were just three days' journey away from this peaceful little town. Fear and panic gripped all of them, and when they convened the council of the wise and brave people, they long continued a dispute. Someone shouted that they needed to fight back, but his voice was immediately drowned in the other voices, shouting that they needed to just give up. Then one of the elders took the floor, and all were silent. Yes, this trouble can come and fall on our heads, but we should avoid shame at all costs. The fierce Khan will not spare anyone. Where he's passed, he leaves only fire and death. Our men have always been real warriors and have died in battle, but none of our men or women have ever been slaves. All of them unanimously nodded. Yes, so it is. We will give the horde a great fight shouted the people from all sides. The earth trembled, the birds flew off in different directions, and the steppe animals hid in their burrows when the Mongolian horsemen filled the valley with their stunted strong horses. The valley drowned in the colorful Mongolian army. The Han looked around the plain and sent a messenger to the city with the requirement to open the gate. The messenger returned and shook his head. The gate wouldn't open. Genghis Khan became furious. No one is allowed to say no to him. He would not leave a stone in the city, and death would fall on all the disobedient. The Han pointed to a single low rock cliff standing in front of the city gates, and he ordered that his warriors would cut a pointed top and spread out their white tents there for he could firsthand see how the warriors would capture this daring and rebellious city. The warriors rushed and shot down the top of the stone cliff, one after another to sundown. They executed their order to the ruler. Genghis Khan was seated on a gilded throne, and he saw at a glance down the valley and into the city, hiding behind the high walls. Khan gave the order, and the siege of the city started relentlessly for a day and a night. The citizens once again gathered at a council and listened to the elders. How many days can we survive, they reasoned. Their warriors gave them a disappointing response. Not more than three days. After all, the army of Genghis Khan is huge and has countless amounts of weapons, and it would take any fortress. Then the wisest of the elders took word and said, we have no choice. We have prepared to the final battle and death. 
as our ancestors did. Stall for a little while, and when we have everything ready, we will enter into a final battle. We will die bravely. We will not give our children and our wives to their mercy. After all, slavery is worse than death. The Han watched the ongoing siege and angrily shook his head. He understood that these citizens are not just merchants, but that they are also valiant warriors. Suddenly, he saw doubt among his own warriors. From the high city walls, instead of boiling tar, stones and arrows and copper coins poured down like rain. The siege was disrupted. The whole day, warriors were collecting coins thrown by the villagers. At dawn, when all the coins had been collected, the army began to storm again. But again, pure silver coins fell down on them. Again, chaos erupted among the soldiers. And once again, the siege of the city was stopped. The next day, the Mongol warriors frantically rushed into battle. But they were enticed again by gold coins. Even greater confusion and a stampede occurred in the ranks of the army. The Han watched from a height as the soldiers dropped their weapons, and they rushed to collect the coins, and he shook in rage. It took another day to calm the troops and to collect them into symmetrical rows. The tent was opened and a captured captain was brought to the Han. The Han began to question him with a grin. Ha ha, what are you fools? The Han laughed. You thought you could buy my warriors? You thought that if they would take the coins, they would scatter them in all directions. Ha ha, see that moron? Genghis Han raised his hand and pointed to the three huge piles of collected coins. See that moron? I have everything to the last coin. The prisoner wiped away caked blood from his mouth, and he said, I see. You thought you could buy my valiant warriors? The Han shouted. No, the prisoner shook his head. We just wanted to buy time. Time? Time. Time cannot be bought, said the Khan. Yes, it is impossible, but you can extend it. You are out of your mind with fear. I'm tired of listening to your nonsense. Execute him immediately, he ordered his servants. Excitedly, the prisoner looked at the Khan and said with trembling lips, Can you, great Khan, fulfill my last request? Can you give me a Dumbra? I want to play my last Kui. A Dumbra? Well, you can finally amuse us, so play. Bring a Dumbra, called the Khan to his servants. The Dumbra's sound was sad. It started to cry when its strings were touched by the prisoner. But the more he played, the melody became alive and furious with fun. The young man's face glowed, and he raised his head and looked clean and clear, looking ahead. When the last note died away, the Khan said, you're doing fine, but I still want to execute you. Now I'm not afraid of death, Khan. I played about this world, about freedom, and about eternity. Now my soul is as free and clear as the sounds of a Dumbra. We have such a custom that when our people are going to die, then we play them this song, and we perform a farewell kui, and there are no longer any fears or cowardice in their hearts. Therefore, we need time that each man would have their own Dumbra. And after all, our people will never surrender to the enemy. If we realize that the battle is lost, we will kill our family, because death is better than slavery. Kill him, Genghis Khan roared in anger. The servants rushed to the prisoner. Khan looked to the siege of the city, and he first heard a quiet melody, as if thousands of women began to cry at the same time. Then it became louder in a more familiar song, the song of the rebellious prisoner, just playing and spreading across the steppe. The Han fixed his gaze ahead, lost in thought, and then resolutely rose from his throne and cried aloud, 
Let him go. The Han looked at the brave citizen and powerfully said, Go to your friends and tell them that I take siege of the city. The prisoner nodded and bowed to the Khan. The commanders in bewilderment only exchanged glances with each other. What for? Why do we take this city? Everything of value we've already received. In slavery, they would not give up and kill each other. Why do we need to engage in a battle and lose our soldiers in vain? At dawn, we will move away. Long ago, this story was forgotten. Only the Watchtower Mountain reminds travelers of the cunning and wise Genghis Khan and the courage of the desperate residents of a small town. For humanity, mountains have always embodied the idea of spiritual elevation as the tree of life and a ladder leading to heaven. Often altars, shrines, temples, and religious symbols were placed on top of mountains. For this reason, mountains were considered the abode of the gods. Shamans are buried there, and their prophecies are accomplished and revelation is acquired. The wild beauty of the mountains attract, at the same time, disturbances. Huge rocky peaks represent century-old mysteries. Among the many mountain ranges, the mysterious mountains with flat tops are very special. In the mountain valley near the Taldikorgan region, there is a mountain called Karaul Tobe. Thousands of people have seen it, but this mountain has some magical power of attraction. Its flat top, as if cut off by a huge sword, is mesmerizing. The mountains in this valley are low, and they have a unique and rugged terrain. Around it grows sparse vegetation, the low prickly shrubs and lichens. Some people call this mountain Genghis Khan's table, and probably for a good reason. According to the legend from the top, he watched the progress of the battle. Perhaps the warriors of the legendary conqueror simply dined on this mountain. Perhaps it's both. We only know that in those old days, the soldiers, after a particularly difficult transition, stayed to rest in this valley. Some people claim that if we approach Karaul Tobe, you can feel the powerful energy charge of this historical monument. This place has become quite famous among travelers. After climbing on top of it, you can see the stones stacked in small pyramids. These people come and confide in these sacred stones, their innermost thoughts, and ask them for strength and protection. But no matter how we tried to solve the secrets of the mountain of Karaul Tobe, it is impossible. And everyone who comes here should try to solve it on their own. The next program will be about the Devil's Finger a large rock which got its name because of its unusual shape. The current popular legend is about a brave and bright boy who deceived the evil and insidious dragon. <laughs> 